initiate screen recording. So I'm gonna show you how I color grade my GoPro footage, specifically this FPV clip, and show you how to turn this into this. Now, I wasn't really looking forward to making this video only because our computer is so old. We're using a 2013 Mac Pro that can barely play back 4K, but serendipitously, NVIDIA reached out and offered to send us one of their top of the line laptops with one of their best GPUs. He's so excited to finally have his own computer. Every single computer, it's like B's laptop, B's Mac Pro, B's MacBook Pro, B's MacBook Pro 2. True. They're all her computers. So I finally have my own computer, courtesy of NVIDIA. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Oh my God, does that mean you're gonna clean your desk now? Touchy subject. All right, so we're gonna quickly open this up in true Becky Peckham style. Oh, okay, I like the, the matte black finish with the the knocked out uh, uh, icon graphics here. Let me very see nice, this shit. Very nice touch. That. We got a little accessories box here with this spot UV coating that says, welcome to the cult of Razer. That's a pretty modern looking charger. It's boxy. I mean, that's nice. Is it matte black? Yeah, it is actually. It's like a satin matte finish. Oh shit, is it green? Oh, is it copper? Ooh, yeah. Why am I over here? Uh... Back to the couch, pleb. You know, let it get back wow, to the couch. Wow, look at that. <gasps> Did you see the way the light reflects on that UV coating? Now, if I was Becky, I'd say, oh, I like the two-tone spot color box with the Pantone 375 green, electric lime green bottom and the matte top with the Spot Aqueous logo. That's exactly what you'd say. Don't be making up Pantone names when they're not accurate. Sorry. Oh wow, this is nice. So I've unboxed it. Um, I'm going to use this for a couple days now, load all my software, test it out, give it a good test drive. So if you see this footage, it means this computer passed my sniff test. Not Becky's sniff test, because she's weird and sniffs electronics, but my sniff test, which actually means testing it out for what I needed to do. All right, it's been a few days. I've had a chance to load all my crap onto this new computer. And let me tell you, it's pretty awesome having my own computer. But this is a company called Razer who's made this laptop called the Blade 15 inch. It's got a 4K display, 16 gigs of RAM, six core uh, i7 processor, and an RTX 2880 NVIDIA graphics card. So very good hardware inside of it. And it comes as sort of a turnkey solution for creators like us. So it's a very high power machine. And the RTX Studio lineup actually is given to multiple vendors who create laptops all with the NVIDIA GPU as sort of the core of the system. And everything's sort of made to work right out of the box. What's a graphics card? You know what a graphics card is? No, but some people might not know. Uh, it handles a lot of the color calculations that we as editors use. As far as my FPV footage is concerned, because this is what most people have seen my footage from, uh, that's just shot basically on a GoPro strapped to a, a drone. We'll link to this video up here if you don't know what we're talking about. It's kind of a new obsession of mine. In order to get the shot that we're using today, I used my GoPro Hero 6. I shot in flat color profile. I used locked exposure, manual white balance, so the, man, the white balance was locked as well. And I shot in four to three mode. And like a noob, I shot in 2.7K. I don't know why I didn't have it on 4K. I think I was using a higher frame rate before. Nonetheless, I forgot to put it back to 4K, which totally defeats the purpose of testing this laptop out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to up res the file to 4K just to prove that we can edit this in 4K flawlessly. Okay, so this clip here is the clip straight out of the GoPro. It's in four to three mode, it's a bit shaky. And this clip here is run through real steady. Link to that program in the description box below. It does wonders for this footage, but you can see is it crops in the four to three to 16 by nine and it smooths it out real nice. It also defishes it. But the color, it looks basic. It looks like it just came right out of a GoPro in a flat color profile because it did. Real steady actually only supports 25 frames per second and above. And since we shoot everything in 24, I shot this in 25 frames per second and then we conform it to 24 or interpret the footage to 24 in post. Pull up media encoder, drag that guy in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and say interpret footage. And the frame rate of this clip natively is 25 frames per second. But I'm gonna say assume this frame rate of 23.976. And that's basically saying take these 25 frames per second, but only play them back at 24 frames per second. So now for settings, we're gonna go DNXHR. It's a nice working codec. My resolution is now, we're gonna up res it from 2.7K up to 4K, so 3840 by 2160. We're gonna use this codec here, the standard quality 8-bit. 
Again, 23.976 frames per second or 24p, and then we hit play. So just out of curiosity, I rendered this clip out on my Mac Pro with the same settings, and it took four minutes and nine seconds to render this clip. I rendered it out earlier today, and it took two minutes and 55 seconds. So it's significantly faster on this computer. You can actually see here my screen recording device is actually using 40% GPU. It's screen recording in 4K as I'm doing all this. This is actually probably going to slow the render down this time around. All right, so this clip was done. I'm gonna pop up Premiere here. We've got our smooth file here, transcoded. Open that up. So drag this down to my new sequence button there. All right, I've got a little edit thrown together here. Oh, we just need to take the color to the next level. So first thing I'm gonna do is we're going to add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna click my new adjustment layer button here and then drag that guy in here. Make that the full length of my timeline here. And we're gonna make a couple adjustment layers, two to be exact. We use a single adjustment layer as a primary adjustment layer to normalize all the clips. And then we use a second adjustment layer on top of that for the actual color grade where we change the colors significantly to fit the mood of the scene. You can't expect this grade to work on every single clip, every single time. Um, but what I'm hoping that you'll get from this is seeing how I'm doing this, how it affects your clips, and therefore learn what you do for each clip. There's no sense in just copying someone's color grade or using someone else's LUTs or presets, hoping that it's gonna work because it's never gonna work. It's learning your tools and then using them appropriately for each clip and understanding what the tools do so that you can get a good outcome regardless of the input clip that you're starting with. So first things first, the color balance in this clip looks very, it looks way too warm. So we're gonna adjust the white balance pretty radically here. So what I do is basically find a representative frame in the clip, or I guess in this case, we just play the clip back since it can play back and adjust at the same time and kind of just eyeball it here. I'm trying to find that sweet spot between two blue and two orange. Now we're looking at it and I'm saying, okay, this is a little bit too green. So I wanna do the same sort of adjustment on the green magenta axis. So play back again, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm thinking this is too magenta, that's too green. Somewhere probably around, you know, here-ish looks good. That's kind of a neutral shot there. So we can turn off and on and we can see dramatically we sucked out a lot of that warmth and now this is a way more neutrally balanced clip. The, the goal of the primary correction layer is to get to a, a neutral starting point so you can color things. Exposure looks good, not gonna tweak that. I do think, however, there's um, a lot of headroom here so we can change the contrast quite dramatically. And we don't wanna clip the blacks, we don't wanna clip the whites, but we wanna add contrast and punch. What I wanna do now is I find a lot of cinematic shots uh, there's never a true white, never a true black. Using the highlight slider will actually bring the brightest parts of your images down without affecting uh, the rest of the image. So it's a very good way to sort of lower your dynamic range. Same with the shadows. We're gonna bring the shadows up a little bit because we don't want that those true blacks. And our shadows will put probably, we don't wanna do it too much. If you overdo it, it'll just look really washed out. So we'll just say, you know, just a nice little light bump on the shadows. I'm also gonna bring my whites down a little bit because again, as I said, I wanna preserve the highlights. The number one thing that gives away digital footage, um, especially from cameras with small sensors like the GoPro, is low dynamic range. So clipped highlights, crushed blacks. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down and give myself some more headroom to sort of simulate that high dynamic range look. So already we can go off and on and we can see that our clip looks vastly different. We've, the biggest correction is with the white balance. And this looks right now, looks really low contrast and still kind of looks gray. We're gonna really add a pop in the mid-tone contrast. I'm gonna go into my curves layer here. And if you have not seen this video, that I've done on it, watch the tone curves video because this is gonna be, this isn't gonna make any sense if you've not seen that video. If I'm looking at my waveform here, I like where the shadows are. So I'm gonna actually put a, a pin or a point on that curve. Just gonna lock the shadows where they are and then I can make adjustments here and really see changes in the mid midtones and highlights without affecting the shadows. So I'm gonna get rid of that there. Con control click to minus to remove one of the points. I'm just gonna go up slightly in my lighter shadows there, just ever so slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to raise my mid-tones just to add a bit of contrast there. And again, we can do this stuff on the fly here. And the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to fine where I've got my brightest whites there. These look kind of blown out, so I'm actually gonna cheat it a little bit and lower the highlights, so there's not gonna be any pure white. And you can see on the, hist on the waveform here that those bright highlights get dropped down and become a little bit grayer and it kind of takes the edge off of those. We turn off the curve, we can see that we've essentially stuck the shadows where they are and selectively raised the mid-tones up towards the highlights, but we've rolled them off nicely to a nice gray tone to simulate sort of a uh, high dynamic range look where there's a nice shadow and highlight roll off. Okay, so I accidentally put the curves layer on the clip itself. 
Uh, so I just deleted that and then I re redrew the curve on my adjustment layer and then made sure that uh, I'm selecting this as my active layer. So this is a good starting point. I'm happy with this. This is good tones. I've got an EMA exposure for the whole clip here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna option drag or alt drag, I should say. Gotta get, rid of, gotta, gotta get used to using the PC again. And then go up into effects up here and then reset the Lumetri panel for this. I've reset it. Now we've got another adjustment layer and this is gonna be our color grade, which is really gonna add the mood to the, to the clip. So for basic adjustments, I'm gonna leave that as is. We've already done all those basic adjustments before. We shouldn't really need to touch that. For the first color adjustment that I usually do is I just kind of give a little bit of a bluish aqua turquoise bump to the shadows. And I find that Becky and I, that's kind of one of the secrets that we use in our videos. All of our color grades are loosely based on a, a sort of a cold steely blue in the shadows and then a compensatory warming up of the highlights. All right, we can play this back here and we can see already turning it off and on. It really kind of takes out that greenish cast. And I, I noticed that a couple frames are dropping when I'm doing this, which weren't dropping before. I think it's because I'm screen recording again in 4K, which is then transcoding in 4K. So it's using part of the GPU to do that. So I could easily drop this to a quarter quality and you won't even notice a difference because this is a 4K screen and this is one quarter of the screen. You can edit it in one quarter and there will literally be no hiccups at all. We can edit it in full in full quality. Why not? Just to kind of show the power of this thing. Okay, so now back to curves. And I split up the curves adjustments into the primary and the grade layers only because I did the RGB curve on the primary layer because it affects the tones and I want to get the tones right on the primary layer. Now I'm going to start doing the red, green, and blue channels. So the first one I start with is the red channel. And the thing I usually do in this case is I kind of pin the lower mid-tones and then I just add a little drop on the red channel here. And what that does is it adds a little bit of sort of this acidy green to the shadows. And a little bit goes a long way here. And this doesn't look right at all because I'm only adjusting the tone curve of the red channel. So what I'll then do is I'll go to the, the green channel here. And again, I'll suck out a little bit of the green out of the shadows. So it neutralizes it. it almost, it's almost like adding purpley magenta to the shadows. And I'll bring the mid-tones back up to a more neutral spot. And then raise my highlights because I want to add some green to the highlights. The last adjustment is going to go to the blue channel, pin the mid-tones, bring down the highlights to add some yellow to the highlights because I want to warm the highlights up. I want to keep a little tiny bit of blue in the dark, dark shadows. So I'll put another point down here. And if all of this doesn't make sense to you and you're thinking, what the hell is he doing? What are all these points? What's this curves dialogue about? Again, watch my video, link up here or link in the description box. We've made our curves adjustment here and essentially what we've done is added acidy green to the shadows sucked out a bit of green to the shadows, kept a bit of blue in there, and then warmed up the highlights. We've added a lot of color, and now what we want to do is we want to adjust the saturation and as well as the hue. And uh, Lumetri recently added these hue saturation and hue versus hue graphs. And again, these can be also very confusing if you don't know how to use them, um, but essentially what it does is it's just basically a curves for the hue. So the hue versus saturation curve, we're gonna start with that one. And right now I'm looking at this image and the first thing I'm thinking is, wow, those greens are really way too punchy. So what we wanna do is we wanna lower the green. So I'm gonna take the eyedropper tool. I'm just gonna find where on the curve this green falls. So I'm gonna click right there and it's put a point right in the green. That's a very narrow curve. So I'm actually gonna widen this out and bring it over to cover almost into the to the cyanide blues. And I'm gonna move this one over into the oranges. So now these will be our sort of our set points and this middle one, I can raise it if I wanna make them the greens way more saturated or I can lower it and I can make them really desaturated. So I don't wanna to go too far, but you can actually see on the vector scope when I raise this all the way up, there's a huge spike that forms on around the yellow area, the yellow green area, which corresponds to where I am on this hue versus saturation curve. So I wanna bring this down. I wanna desaturate it kind of nicely. So I think that the yellows are still a little bit too punchy and the orange is a little bit too punchy. So I'll do is I'll just bring this one down a little bit as well and just kind of bring down the overall saturation of the oranges, reds, as well as into the magentas and, and pinks there. We're gonna leave the blues tacked to where they are. So if I can turn this off on. So the greens are a little bit too harsh. We've really taken the edge off. This next graph is the hue versus hue. So what we're doing is basically saying, I want to take one color essentially and shift it to another color. I want my greens and my yellows. So again, these points here, I want these to be 
a little bit shifted towards the yellowy red. I wanna kinda warm them up a little bit. So I'm gonna put two points there. I wanna say I don't want any adjustments to the magenta, so I'm gonna put a point there. And now what I can do is I can raise this color up and so you can see as soon as I click, another hue line shows up in the vertical orientation. So I'm basically saying I wanna take the greens and I wanna shift them to yellow. So see how it goes green to yellow. And then this one I can raise as well. I wanna shift the yellows to more of kind of a uh, magenta, magenta e. Magenta. Magenta. I want to shift it to a magenta e color here. And again, it's just kind of tweaking it to your personal preference. I'll raise this one up to, up too much. Or there's too much magenta, so I want to raise that down a little bit. You can make it all magenta here. Do some crazy color effects. There you go. I'm happy with that. So you can see we really sucked the green and yellowy kind of sickly color out and made it more look a little bit desaturated, yellowy fall look. So the Hue versus Luma, this is basically you wanna selectively brighten or darken certain colors in your clip. Uh, you can theoretically darken your your trees or lighten them. Again, it, they kind of look muddy when you darken them and they look very fake when you lighten them. So I don't usually use this one too much. And the grade is pretty much done here now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a little bit of extra uh, blue in the shadows, just a touch here, just to kind of finish it off. And then a little bit more warmth in the midtones. I'm gonna leave the highlights where they are because I think we've added a lot. Okay, so the final thing I'll do is add a little tiny vignette. What a vignette is, is it just kind of darkens the corners and it sort of simulates um, the natural light fall off of a really wide aperture lens. Put the feathering up so it looks natural. If I bring the feathering all down and I add the vignette, it'll just look like a stupid circle. So if we change the feathering, it makes it a nice natural fall off. The roundness, I'll sort of leave at zero here. So I'll put that back at zero. The midpoint changes how big or small your circle is. So I'll kind of create like a sort of a medium oval in the middle there, and then I'll feather it 100%. And then the amount, I'm gonna make just a tiny amount. Heavy vignettes look nice and moody in photos. When you put them on video where it's moving, it looks really fake. It kind of draws the viewer sort of more into your into your image and keeps them there and focuses them in a bit because it kind of creates that light fall off on the edges. All right, so that's basically from start to finish how I color grade all my clips, whether it be GoPro clips or clips from our full mirrorless cameras. This process was very streamlined. I'm very happy with how fast I was able to accomplish all this, but being able to get real time updates on color, being able to play back and edit the color at the same time, that for me is a game changer because I'm coming from a 2013 computer, which just, isn't hacking anymore, especially with 4K footage. As you guys seen, it can handle 4K footage and it can edit the colors in real time, which is awesome. So really looking forward to using this in all our future projects. Thank you Nvidia for sponsoring this video. And you guys must've been watching uh, my other previous videos where I've been talking about getting a PC because it was, the timing could not have been better. I literally talked about getting a PC in my last drone video. I heckled Becky all the time. When was the last time I heckled you about getting a PC? Every day. Why is there a pizza ball already? Because you should have bought a PC like I told you. So here I am, I got my own PC. I can play Battlefield 5 on all ultra settings, which is awesome. And I can't wait to get my VR system. I've been talking about getting, making a VR room and getting a VR setup. So this is gonna be the heart of that system. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can notify when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. Bye. Oh, Test the microphone. We're not testing. testing. We're not testing the microphone. Initiate screen recording. I'm gonna make sure this is gonna suit my needs as far as what a computer can do. I assume it will because it's a computer made in 2019. Um, but wow, throw in shade. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, Listen, if you don't f***ing sniff this laptop, you gotta take the plastic off. By come on. Sorry, I don't sniff my products. <laughs>